Kristen Gum, and I'm hunting for treasures. Yeah. We're on a hunt for treasure that will take us to the heart of Wisconsin and across the state of Michigan. We're after the valuable morel mushroom, a tasty treat that we'll track down, fry up, and enjoy. Oh, really good. <laughs> and the best part? A day of hunting for this pricey mushroom could put some serious cash in your pocket. That is sweet. Come join the hunt. <laughs> for delectable treasures next on the best places to find cash and treasures. Woohoo! I got two! thought a fungus could earn you some cold hard cash. The morel mushroom is the mac daddy of them all. And the best part about this tasty treat, you can find them almost anywhere, even in your own backyard. Treasure hunters, get ready to reel in some big bucks as we travel just outside Madison, Wisconsin to the small town of Richland Center. Here, we're going to hunt for delicious morel mushrooms that can fetch up to $70 a pound. And from February until June, they are ripe for the picking. To get the scoop on unearthing my morels, I'm meeting up with mushroom expert Chris Matherly. He's the president of a morel mushroom club, and today, he's going to teach me how to track down this valuable treasure. Hi, you must be Chris. Yes, I am. I figured I was in the right spot. Very nice. Yes. Morels. That's an easy way to find me. I'm ready. Okay. Let's go hunt. Let's go hunting. Our hunt has brought us to a big stretch of forested private property. We've asked for permission from the landowner, and be sure you do the same if you're not hunting on public land. Ready to get our hunt on, Chris gives me a quick rundown on the tools I'll need to find my morels. Be sure to bring along a few tools. A walking stick helps push away dense foliage a mesh bag to carry your treasures, and a knife to cut your mushrooms from the ground. This is what the that's morel a, mushroom morel. looks like. And so if this was a stem, you'd cut it off right there at the ground. Geared up and ready to roll, Chris gives me my first morel lesson. There's a lot of places morel, morels grow, you know, apple trees, dead elm trees, and uh, different parts of the country, they, they grow in different areas. Is that why they call them the elusive morel? Because right. you never know where you're going to find them? And also, you might spot one, and then, then all of a sudden it just disappears, it goes back in the hole. So. Oh, come on. Okay. Now you're pulling my leg. <laughs> come on. To get started, all you have to do is look under dead elm or apple trees. But the question is, how do you find the apple and elm trees? Is this an elm? No, nope, not an elm. What about these? I'm sorry, they look like locusts. Is that an elm? No, I'm sorry, that's not an elm. What about this one? This looks like an elm tree. It's just a dead tree. Okay. Is that an elm? You've got it. <laughs> yes! I got an elm. When looking for dead elms, keep an eye out for thin grayish bark. It also doesn't hurt to buy a tree guide to help you out. With an elm in sight, we quickly zero in on a promising grove of trees. Oh my god, look at this. Hurry. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Three step. Whoa, they're everywhere. Wow. Is this what you call the mother load? This is a this is a mini mother load. With a slice to the base of the mushroom, I've got my first find and my first feel. They feel really freaky. It rained last night, so they're a little they're a little soft, but they're these are really prime. They're in, in good condition. I feel like I'm holding a brain in my hand at yep. the moment. <laughs> we quickly scour the base of the tree and find five more ripe mushrooms. How much do I have so far, money wise? What do you think? Well, probably got almost a half a pound already. Are you uh, kidding me? No. Nope. How much does a half a pound go for? I, I personally saw in a, in a mushroom festival, they had half pound bags and they was auctioning them off for about $60 a bag. <laughs> With Chris's keen eye, I already have $60 sitting heavy in my bag. But Mother Nature has a little surprise in store for us. The rain's starting to come down harder, but... Uh, I've got mushroom madness. I still want to go. We've got more mushrooms to find. All right, let's go. Along with the downpour of rain comes a little competitive spirit. You know what I noticed? You got zero. Yeah, we're zero. Gonna have, we're going to have to do something about that. Yeah, you're not doing too well. Okay. Well, I think I'm winning. Let's see what we can do. Despite the deluge, we hit our stride and the mushrooms start popping right out of the ground. Oh, wow, look at this one. I got two here. Be careful. Wow. Oh, there's another one over there. All, all over there. I see them all over there. Oh my gosh, look at that. 
He has got the trained eyes, I swear. Are you putting your first one in your bag? This is my first <laughs> one. I can't be skunked now. Good morels are a thing of beauty, but be wary of mushrooms gone bad. Here's one, too. Look at this one. Is this one too far gone? That one looks looks like it's too soggy and got the mold on it again. We'll let that it, reeks. We'll let it we'll let it set some spores for next time. It smells like <laughs> sour smell. It's just gross, yeah. In addition to watching out for moldy mushrooms, be on alert for morel lookalikes. Mushrooms that look like there's a false morel, morel that's a gyrometra species. But a what? It's it's gyrometra. And Don't when get you all technical on me. Okay. <laughs> well, keep it in simple terms. Morels are hollow, and the false morels have chambers, and if it's not hollow, don't swallow. Also, be sure not to eat your morels raw. Cook them before you enjoy them. On a roll, we meet up with another mushroom hunting pro, Stuart Davis. He's going to teach me a few hunting basics, namely, watch where you step. I can't believe I almost stepped on them. Yeah, that's a good way to get your foot stabbed. It's not the person. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I won't take it personally. Okay. In spite of the fierce competition, I push on, and it isn't long before we land right on top of a find that doubles our weight. Oh, that one's huge. How can it be so dense when it's so hollow? The head of it's just very thick and meaty, and you can slice that in half, fry it up just like a steak. Yeah, that looks, I mean, that that's a meal in itself right there. Absolutely. Turns out these delicious fungi also have a tantalizing smell. See, that smells nutty. <laughs> Can't wait to eat these things. I love the hunt, and I also love a good reward. Chris and I head back to the truck to lay out our mushrooms. I mean, I'm psyched about our finds here. I'm psyched about the day. We did good. Time for the moment of truth. Did all of our tromping through the woods pay off? We have 75. About 75, yeah. 75 mushrooms. Mm -hmm. What do you think that's worth? It, you know, at, at that premium price, five, five pounds was it was going to run you around 500 bucks. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. I'm completely psyched, and that's my first mushroom hunt. Despite battling the elements, our Wisconsin hunt put a good chunk of change in our pockets. But I hear that massive morel mother loads can also be found in Michigan, as long as you can brave a few forest surprises. The wild rose is getting you. Ow. After a day of hunting for morel mother two hours southwest of Detroit, Michigan, to the town of Reading. I've met back up with Chris Matherly, who is going to lead a gathering of fungi fanatics on a group hunt also known as a guided foray. This is the group? This is the official foray? It, it is official. This is, this is the group. These are the crazy mushroom hunters. <laughs> we head straight for the forest, and it isn't long before the first find of the day. One of the lucky hunters comes across a group of morels, and I dive right in to offer him a hand. 